Okay, so Destiny 2 Forsaken launched recently, and I've been playing it quite a lot. And generally, I've been having a good time. That is, however, until recently. I've stopped playing the game as much as I was, and I was playing it a lot after the initial launch because it was good. The story was good, the villains were good, everything made sense, there was a plot, and the villains actually had personalities, and they spoke to you, and they had words to say, unlike a lot of bosses and enemies you fight in Destiny as an entirety. There are very few villains that have personality that you just kind of go there and they're just a bigger version of everything you fight literally i made jokes in the first one like watch we're gonna have to fight a big shank in the dlc and then it happened and then, and then and then it happened and that was in destiny one it was hilarious when it did and yeah anyway i digress so the whole point of this video is that you almost did it bungie you almost did and i was having a great time but then you realize a lot of things in Destiny 2 Forsaken that ruin the end game experience once you get there. And let me explain. So, item the first. Item the first is all about the fact that they actually reduced the loot table quite dramatically. If you think about it, if you really think about it. The random rolls on weapons and armor is a really good idea except they didn't apply it to all of the armor pre-forsaken this means all of the trials armor you earned all the crucible iron banner you know all the faction armor all the season one test armor that you either got through bright engrams or even if some of the people out there you paid silver to get because you wanted it you know that that armor now it's it's just statistically worse than all of the armor in Forsaken. Now you can bring it up to the same power level, but that's not my point here. My point here is that none of that previous armor has random rolls for perks. They just have the standard mobility, defense, and whatever the other one was, I don't remember. But those armors not having perks now means that they essentially are not worth infusing. And that everything within Forsaken is the only armor worth putting on which just sucks from a gameplay point of view because there's a lot of beautiful armor sets in destiny 2 not nearly as many as destiny 1 but there's a lot of really cool looking ones that you can find a lot of very samey ones yes of course there's a lot of duplicates that are just have a different name but that's not what this video is about there's there's still a fair amount of cool ones that you can find out there and you you can't really use them anymore. I mean, you can, but there's no point. They made them pointless. And I understand on a development point of view that, yes, you want people to use and wear the new armor sets, but you don't do that by making the old ones inferior. You do that by making the new ones appealing, but you still have the old ones as an option on equal footing. Maybe you make the new armor more relevant in the new DLC for the new situations within there, like you did with the Reverie Dawn. That makes sense. You use that in a specific location, and you do more damage. That makes sense. So you're going to wear that in that location. But the rest of the armor, you just you, you let us level it up to give us the illusion that it's still there, but you really you took it away. You really did. And... I hate that because I'm not I'm, I mean as much as I want to use it I'm not and that leads me into point two infusion costs costs I don't know why I said it like that costs but I'm not going to infuse that old armor because now the, the amount of resources it takes to infuse is ridiculous it's like legendary into legendary is 8,000 glimmer 10 legendary shards two masterwork cores and 25 planetary materials that is insane and it doesn't make any sense from a gameplay point of view because all that does is that just makes people stockpile the resources and they wear the crappy armor that they don't really like until they get to a level they feel comfortable enough to start infusing. People will just mix and match different armor until they get to 550 probably, which is raid ready. And then they'll start infusing when they, they you know, feel like 
okay, I'm at a point where I can now wear the armor I want and look good and be the power level I want. That's just dumb. That's just terrible, terrible game design. Don't make veteran players go through the same exact process of when they originally started the game. Don't, but you already did, so I guess me telling you not to do it now is just pointless because you already did that. You treated veterans like they were babies, and it's fine to give us a new experience and to power up again, but don't make it cost that much more. The only, the only way those costs would be justified to me is if you allowed me to infuse a helmet into like a cloak or a chest piece or you know vice versa, and you just made that more expensive. Not only would that make sense, that would also make it so that when you do a powerful gear drop and you get a chest piece or whatever, or piece of armor that is the same as that current slot's level that you're already at. So if, you have, if you're wearing a 529 chest piece, you do a powerful gear quest and you get another 529 chest piece and you're all like, oh yes, good. I'm not moving forward. This is so fun. I love being stuck in place even though it's supposed to be powerful gear. It's such good game design. It would make so much sense if you said, hey, you know what? That's part of the game that you got that 529 chest piece because we know that you have a 515 cloak and you can infuse that 529 chest piece into that cloak but it's going to cost you masterwork course to do it now. So that would make sense. That would be good game design because then if you got a shitty roll, pardon my language, crappy roll, then I guess it's not really any better, then you could at least still have the option of getting stronger by infusing that into the weaker armor for more currency or whatever for more materials that's the word i'm looking for but that's not an option you just made it take longer to look the way we want to i guess that's really all you did because people are going to stockpile until they get to that level like i was saying earlier all right <clears throat> moving on to the third and final item and that is just the exotic drops you went back to destiny one vanilla which you had to fix with three of coins in Destiny 1 Vanilla. Three of Coin made it so that, eventually, if you used one, you were guaranteed an exotic drop from a boss, and every time you didn't get an exotic drop, the chance would increase. You also made it so that Xur doesn't sell Forsaken Exotics, and Faded Engram won't drop any. So, I don't really understand what the reasoning behind it is. I would understand if you didn't get any duplicates in your collection if every exotic engram that dropped worked like a faded engram and it would be something new guaranteed until you filled out the collection and then you would start getting duplicates because then they would drop at higher power level but uh they don't <laughs> so not only are they super rare it's more common that when you do finally get an exotic drop you're going to get something you already own if you're a veteran player and that is another terrible thing to do to people that actually have stuck with your game up until now the people that are that are buying forsaken that are veteran players they want the new things now i'm not saying you give us all the exotics like you did at the beginning of destiny 2 where they just dropped from everything but how about locking them behind difficult quests all of them like you've been doing with the really cool exotics why not make every single exotic have some sort of quest line? Or even if it's just this specific boss under this specific nightfall, this specific week, or something like that. Hell, even if you made it so that specific wanted enemies in the field could like could populate in as a huge event and they became super strong because they have an exotic weapon and they use that exotic weapon against you during that battle, at least you know, hey, this wanted knight has this exotic he's destroying me with it we have to beat him in this certain amount of time and we're guaranteed to get it because he's using it so he's gonna drop it that would even be better because it's something that you could track and you can go for this wanted boss is gonna have it eventually this one's gonna have that one eventually things like that that is what would make exotics exotic and fun not oh I killed the drag my, I killed my 1500th drag today and it dropped an exotic but it was it was the Orpheus rigs and I already had those, so I don't I don't know why he had them. He's not a night stalker. He wasn't wearing them or anything. Weird, but you know I don't know. I guess that's good game design. Just have a random enemy drop an exotic. That's that makes it worth it. That makes it. But that's just lazy. It just shows that you didn't put any thought into where these exotics go and where they actually fit into the world. Unlike Whisper, which made sense and has a background. Other exotics similar to Whisper too. 
That makes sense. Every exotic is supposed to be steeped into the world of destiny, and it exists because of a certain guardian or a certain reason. And uncovering that exotic should have a story behind it. It, it really just should. So, those are my main gripes with it. I mean, it just... It's, it's annoying when they always do this. There's always something to go, Ugh, why? Why, Bungie? Why? They're so close and yet so far at the same time. But I'm still going to play because I haven't done the raid yet. I'm very close to the power level to do the raid. But still waiting for some friends to get up there. Hopefully we can do it this week. And it's still a good time. You know to be had when you play with friends so until anthem comes out which honestly i really hope anthem is really good i'm scared that it might not be because of ea but i i hope i hope so hard that it is a million times better than destiny and does everything right that destiny couldn't get right and that bungie has to finally be put in their place and checked and need to start making content that actually is all around good instead of well this is good but then they did this which is pretty much all of destiny's career <laughs> up till now is oh this is really good i just wish it didn't do this and, and everyone has it everyone has their gripes with destiny but it's fun enough to go through those horrible things and still want to play the game because like i said before it's a really good time with friends i don't think i could do it solo all the time i can do solo for some stuff like dailies and things like that but a majority of the time i'm gonna play that game with friends it's not that fun otherwise all right well thanks for watching talk to you later bye